A few weeks ago, I got a chance to join a big roundtable of other Star Wars YouTubers and podcasters, and we got to ask the stars of Andor some questions about the upcoming series. This video is our interview with Genevieve O'Reilly, who got to tell us more about Mon Mothma at this point in the Star Wars timeline. I'll warn you, some of the outlets got to see, I think, the first four episodes before this, and there are some very vague references to them, but nothing major. I haven't seen the episodes, and I didn't feel like any major bombshells were dropped, but I know everyone has their own personal threshold for spoilers, so this is a very, very minor warning. The conversation was a lot of fun, it was great to see so many familiar faces at the roundtable, and I'll link to all the other content creators in the description. Unfortunately, we only have the audio from the interview, but it's a great conversation, so I hope you enjoy. Hi, Genevieve. I am so excited to see the Imperial Senate in Andor. Uh, it's been kind of vague to Star Wars fans even since the original film. So how would Mon Mothma describe its inner workings in public? And then how might she describe it to a trusted friend behind closed doors? Ooh, I'll start with the fact that the Imperial Senate is vast and huge and exposing. And when one is speaking in a space like that, it exposes vulnerabilities. It also exposes your passion. It forces you to steal yourself and have a voice in your beliefs. It can be alienating because it is so vast, because it represents such interplanetary structure. There will be voices aligned with mine and there will be many voices opposed. I think the inner machinations of a space like that are difficult to navigate. And as a character, one has to be brave to step into them, to own your own voice and fight for what you believe in, even when you might fail. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, the question we wanted to ask is, given that this is the, the third time that you came back to play this character in live action, how has your approach to your to how you portray the character and your perspective on the character changed as you've played the character at each uh, different stage in your life? I think we know Mon Mothma so much from the films over the years, from where Carolyn Blackstone originated her in Return of the Jedi, through to the few times that I have had the opportunity to play her. But each of those times previously, they were quite public roles, and that she has a dignity and a serenity to her that makes me it reminds me of like a pillar for the rebellion, something strong, something calm. And what was an extraordinary gift with Tony Gilroy's writing with Andor is that we meet Mon Mothma in a completely different place navig and navigating a very different world than we're used to her seeing. She feels um, very, uh, she's working within the empire she feels different, she looks different, but we also meet a private side of Mon Mothma. We get to meet not just the figure, but also the woman. And that's what I think will be exciting for fans um, to watch as much as, as it is for me to play. Hello, I'm Brian from Pink Milk, where we talk Star Wars queerly. And I'm not sure if you're aware how stunning you look in Aww. every one of those trailer shots and the energy you have on that couch has instantly made you an absolute gay icon so i hope you're aware <laughs> of that because we're all in love with you um well you have to is... give a nod to michael wilkinson there our costume okay. designer he's extraordinary <laughs> well thank you michael um do you have any advice as mon mothma to to young queer people who are growing up in a time where our rights are being threatened the media portraying us is not handling us well yet again and and there's kind of a smear campaign against our entire community in the in in the united states right now and star wars is such a inspirational story and characters like mon mothma creating the rebellion i think can inspire a lot of young people um do you have any advice from mon mothma for that yeah i'm gonna lean into where we find mon mothma in andor 
and she is somewhere different than we've seen her before. Usually she's surrounded by a band of rebels. She's in with like-minded thinking people. When we meet her at the beginning of Andor, she is a lonely voice in opposition. She is trying to have a voice in a, in a space, in a workplace, in a world where everyone seems to be thinking differently to her. And they are oppressing her ideas. They are oppressing people. What, we're, what we know in Star Wars, and we know where we're going to go in Andor, is very different from where we start. Where we start, we have all these characters, both Mon Mothma and Cassian Andor, among others, who feel alone in their fight, who feel alone in their beliefs, in their ideas. I think what, we ex what, what will happen going forward is that they will find each other, that they will reach out, that they will risk, that they will find their community. And it is in finding your community that, that you can collaborate and you can stand up and you can seek to make a change and revolt together. Thank you for joining us. The Mon Mothma scenes in Revenge of the Sith were uh, mostly cut. And will it be worth the wait to finally see the political scenes as Mon Mothma evolves as the leader of the Rebel Alliance we finally see in Rogue One? I hope so. That's what was so exciting for me to come in and step into Tony Gilroy's writing in Andor. He is writing not just the political figure, not just for Mon Mothma, the, the rebel or who will become the rebel leader, but he is writing for her as a woman, what it costs to be this figure, how dangerous it is to, for her to stand up for what she believes in. And I think we will, given the time and the narrative space that Tony and Disney are investing in her, I think it will be worthwhile. I think the wait is worthwhile and I'm excited to have the opportunity to play it. Hi, so I'm Keith Yarn from Father's Side Galaxy. Uh, Hi, like, Keith. Hello. So I wanted to ask you about how, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Ma Mothra was played by another actress in Return of the Jedi for a very brief few minutes in the movie. But when you got pitched to play the character, how was Mon Mothma described to you that made you want to be like, yeah, I want to play this role? That's a great question, Keith. Um, I think when I was offered the role um, or to step into the shoes of Mon Mothma nearly 17 years ago now, when I was a young actor for the film Revenge of the Sith, it was really important for me to look at what George Lucas and Caroline Blackston created originally for Return of the Jedi. And you're right, it was a very small scene, but it was a really important scene within the film. And I think the character of Mon Mothma has a lot of gravitas within the Star Wars world because of who she is as a woman, how she stands up with a quiet confidence, with a dignity and a serenity, with a calm leadership that the rebels need at that time and continue to need in each iteration that we see her. Hi, this is Brandon from Talk Bay 94. Um, a real quick question, just because it's been mentioned how much You've been in Star Wars for almost 20 years now. How has that evolved for you? And how has it remained the same with Andor going from big screen to animation and now live action television? Well, I think as an actor, I inhabit the role. That's my job. So whether that's television or uh, animation with the voice or um, big screen, it's essentially the same job. I have to st I have to inhabit a character and bring her to life. I will say that I think Andor in particular is unashamedly, ambitiously cinematic in its scope and in its scale. So it felt like 
a piece of film that we were making every day. The designs, um, the, the set design, the costume design, it's huge, it's epic. And it's wonderful to get to play Mon Mothma again in that arena. Hi there, I wanted to ask um, how you feel about portraying the same character over the last 17 years and how you feel the character has grown. It's a unique opportunity to get to play a, the same character at different times in her life relative to the different points in my life. And I feel I have grown with her. It's wonderful to have the opportunity at this moment to explore her as a woman, as a leader in a difficult time. I'm thrilled that I have the opportunity to do that now at this point in my life, where I have a history of not just this character behind me, but of other roles. And I can bring, I think, a texture to the development of this character that I wouldn't have been able to had I, been oppor had, had, had I had an opportunity to do that 20 years ago. Hi, Genevieve. I'm Charlotte from Sky Talkers. So great to talk with you today. Um, from what we've seen of Mon Mothma in the show so far and before as well, she has an amazing eye for fashion. Can you talk a little bit about your wardrobe and how it may have informed your performance? I worked with our genius costume designer, Michael Wilkinson, very closely. He has a beautiful eye. And he worked with Francoise and Malin and the, th the, the three of them curated her outfits in a way that I haven't been able to experience before in film or television. Michael, Malin and Francoise worked almost as with me, almost as if we were in an atelier for haute couture. They crafted and curated and created these beautiful, beautiful pieces of wardrobe that I never knew Mon Mothma would have had. It was a joy to be given the opportunity not only to wear those costumes and to feel different as Mon Mothma in them, but also to help craft them with Michael Wilkinson. And I'm looking forward to yourself and fans to seeing Mon Mothma in those pieces of work and seeing that labor of love on screen. Hi, Genevieve, it's Gustavo and Mariana with Triad of the Force. So happy to talk to you. Uh, our question is, uh, obviously we've seen Mon Mothma and Return of the Jedi and in that movie, it's just like this mythic leader of the rebellion. And then we see her portrayal in Revenge of the Sith where there she's a more hopeful character that tries to reform uh, the Republic from within, from the chaos that she sees might be glooming, obviously. The Republic fell and we have the Empire now. So we have Mon Mothma in a different place right now in the series for Andor. So how do you take like those two moments of Mon Mothma's life from Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi and kind of combine them to where she's at now? And how is it different from both moments in time? Well, really, in regard to the moments in time, the only moment in time that has happened before this story, before Andor, is Revenge of the Sith. We have yet to get to the Mon Mothma in Rogue One, and then eventually the Mon Mothma in uh, Return of the Jedi. Obviously, they inform my portrayal of her because I know that they exist, and I want to pay homage not only to Caroline and the work that she did in Return of the Jedi, but also the work that uh, Tony and Diego and I among many others, did in Rogue One. The scenes that were shot in Revenge of the Sith didn't really make it to the, to the final cut, but they still exist in deleted scenes. And they also live with inside me because I got to play them. And so they live in my cellular memory. But what's wonderful about Andor and where we find Mon Mothma in such a new space in Andor is that she can carry those hopes and those beliefs and that idealism that she had in Revenge of the Sith, but it can manifest in such a completely different reality when she has to continue to stand 
and fight against this wall of opposition as a woman in a working environment that is the Imperial Senate. Good morning, Senator. We are Richard and Sarah from Skywalking Through Neverland. And our Hi. question is that we see, you mentioned that Mon Mothma had a private side. And, you know, we see here that you, we see her in her day-to-day -day life at home. She has a husband. So what is it about her personality that you thought was most important to portray in these scenes? And also because you have so much experience playing Mon Mothma over 20 years, what have you brought from your life experience to these private scenes? It's wonderful to know the public woman, to know her serenity, to know her um, dignity, and to have the opportunity as an actor when she enters a private space to be able to let that go to be able to take a cloak off. In fact, maybe in it, I'm not sure if I'm remembering correctly, but maybe in that first scene, you see me take off the Imperial uh, medal. And I wanted to, 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 to do that, to show that in life, sometimes we have to release ourselves from the robes we, were, we wear. And that was what we're reaching for with, um, the different sides of Mon Mothma through Andor to reassess who she is publicly when we see who she is privately. What is, can, can we break down that serenity? Can we break through that glass that she is and see what is perhaps more chaotic and more difficult and more painful in her private life? And then how does that inform who the woman, the woman she is going forward? How much can that give texture to this public woman that we know, we know, we know going forward if we know the, the, the pain or the, the cost in her private life that she has had to carry with her? Hi, thanks so much. Talk about the amazing fellow actors that you work with and how you all work together to enhance one another's performance. In Andor, there is quite an extraordinary ensemble of brilliantly talented actors. Diego Luna, Adria Rona, Denise Goff, Kyle Soller, Fiona Shaw. I'm not sure how many more I'm allowed to mention, but I'll start with those. They are the cream of acting talent both in this country and in in yours it's a joy to be to stand alongside actors of that caliber to stretch each other to to push each other to inspire each other you know yourself with great fellowship around you with with everyone else reaching you can only work better and 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 achieve more. They're a special group of people and I'm really excited for everyone to see their collective, the collective work that is the ensemble of Andor. And that does it for our Genevieve O'Reilly roundtable interview. In case you missed it, I've got the interview with Diego Luna linked in the cards, and in a little bit, I'll have one more interview with Denise Goff and Kyle Soler ready to release, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our Andor coverage, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.